I'll now call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Texas Southwest College uh, District. Trustees present tonight are Mr. Eduardo Campidano, uh, Ms. Rosemary Breedlove, Ms. Adela Garza, Dr. Roberto Robles, Mr. Ren Rene Torres. Uh, Mr. Chester Gonzalez is absent, but he has the best reason in the world. His wife's having a fundraiser tonight, and uh, <laughs> his presence was, uh, was, was required. So. Uh, he's, he's excused and also absent tonight is Dr. Julia Garcia, which I, I think in the, in the 16 years on, I've been on the board, I, I, I can't recall another meeting. Somebody said there was one, but I can't recall one, but she also has good reasons and she is on the selection committee for uh, UT Pan Am president and they're interviewing uh, finalists, I guess, uh, today and, and, and tomorrow. And so uh, she could not get, get away, but we are uh, uh, filling in for her is, is the uh, ever ready and ever capable uh, Dr. Antonio Savaleta, our interim provost. Thank you. Uh, the first item on the agenda is uh, announcements. Are there, uh, and I guess we don't have any announcements right now, do we? No, not on, not on the agenda. Uh, second is we have uh, the acceptance of a gift in resolution uh, uh, from a very uh, special person. And I'll call on Dr. Ruth Ann Raglan, the Vice President for Institutional Advancement. Mr. Chairman, board members, and Dr. Zavaleta, it's been our pleasure to announce 12 significant gifts toward the $6.7 million needed to top off the bond funding for construction of our new art center. You have named the Gloria and James D. Zellerbach Green Room, the Dr. Roberto and Perla Robles Teaching Studio, the IBC Bank Orchestra Pit, the Tipton Family Teaching Studio, the Mary Elizabeth Holsworth Butt Lobby Gallery, the Neil and Lourdes Simmons Teaching Studio, the Sergio and Magda Arguez Box, the Habet Family Concessions, the Keppel Amfels box, the Bernice and Ruben Edelstein grand piano room, the Villarreal and Montemayor family <coughs> box, and the Charles and Elizabeth Stillman box. And tonight, we have another significant gift to present. This is a gift from Ms. Graciela Gutierrez of Brownsville. Ms. Gutierrez has been a friend and supporter of UTBTSC in education and the arts for many years and she's well known throughout the Rio Grande Valley and Northern Mexico in the banking and business communities. Many also know her as an active participant in community projects related to care for the elderly and for her expertise in finance that she provides voluntarily to boards of local organizations. Mrs. Gutierrez serves on our TSC Foundation Endowment Financial Advisory Committee and she's a longtime member of our development board. She also has been a teacher at Texas Southmost College. She saw a need to help bankers in Mexico learn to do business in the United States, and she began teaching classes in banking for international students at TSC before the partnership. Her interests in education also extend to both sides of the border. She has helped high schools in Matamoros through teaching as a volunteer. In recognition of the dedication that Ms. Gutierrez has for UTBTSC, her commitment to its mission of providing high quality education, and for her support of the Arts Center, we would like to recommend that the board name Box D on the first floor of the Arts Center, the Graciela Gutierrez Box. There's our building on the outside. There's our performance hall on the inside. And here is Box D, the Graciela Gutierrez Box. Box D is located on the first floor of the performance hall at the immediate right of center nearest to the stage. And the view from this box is close up and excellent. The naming will require board action, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. This time I'll read a resolution. Whereas uh, Ms. Graciela Gutierrez has been an outstanding friend and supporter of the University of Texas at Brownsville and Texas Southmost College for many years. Whereas, uh, thank you for turning those lights up too. <laughs> whereas Ms. Uh, Graciela Gutierrez has been a strong advocate for education and the fine arts in Brownsville and the Rio Grande Valley. 
And whereas Ms. Graciela Gutierrez has strived to serve and improve the quality of life in the Rio Grande Valley for people of all ages for many years through business, economic development, and community service, and whereas music education and the visual and performing arts at the University of Texas at Browns on Texas Albums College and in the Rio Grande Valley will be nurtured in the Arts Center for many years to come, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of the Texas Southmost College District that Box D on the first floor of the Arts Center will be named the Graciela Gutierrez Box. And I move that we accept the resolution as stated. There's a motion by Dr. Robles uh, to adopt the resolution as stated, a second by Ms. Breedlove. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I didn't think there would be. Thank you. <laughs> Graciela, please. Well, I have always believed to help in my community, whether it is Matamoros, where I was born and raised, or Brownsville, my home now. And I'm very honored to be part of the UT Brownsville and Texas Almost College. And, uh, and uh, I want to, to thank Mary Rose Cardenas and Juliet Garcia for inviting me to start doing something for the university here. I was helping some other institutions, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to do it. And I wanted to mention something that happened to me in the early 70s, I went to the Middle East, to Morocco, and I was uh, looking a lot of kids in the streets at uh, a scholar time, and the parents sitting in the sidewalks. And I asked the city, the city tour guy, why these kids are playing in, this, in the streets at this time? They said, because the, the monarchy you know, they don't want these people to be educated because it's the best way to control the people. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, pain to me that kids, they, 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 they didn't go to school. And, and since then, I started working for, uh, to help some uh, schools in Matamoros. And then when I came here, I said, well, if this is my community now, I want to help here in Brownsville. We also have a little presentation. We'd like to present you with a photo. Uh, with a, I'm sorry, with a, yes, a photo, and also with a <coughs> Take some pictures with us. <coughs> Board members?
thank you, Graciela. You've been a, a, a friend, I guess, of the colleges for as long as I've been on the board, and we appreciate, appreciate your contribution. And on behalf of all the board, thank you so much. The uh, next item on the agenda is uh, we have another resolution, and uh, I'll read it at this time. Whereas uh, Paul Charles Thomas Cowan, a native of Brownsville and longtime staff member and chief of staff for Senator Eddie Lucio Jr., has announced his retirement from public, off, uh, public service from Senate uh, District 27, effective August 31st, 2009. And whereas Paul Cowan attended public schools, uh, including Brownsville High School and the University of Texas Pan American, whereas in 1990, Paul Cowan joined Representative Lucio's staff in the Texas House of Representatives and on January 14, 1991, transitioned to the Texas Senate with Senator Eddie Lucio Jr. as his co-chief of staff, and in 1995 became the chief of staff. Uh, whereas Paul Cowan is currently the longest serving chief of staff, which makes him the dean of the chiefs of staff in, in the Texas Senate. <laughs> <laughs> And whereas Paul Cowan uh, also served as a senator's administrator for the Senate Intergovernmental Relations Committee from 1993 to 97, Senate Border Affairs Committee from 1998 to 2003, and the Senate International Relations and Trade Committee from 2003 to 2009. And whereas Paul Cowan, uh, Paul Thomas Cowan has played a leadership role in support of many community organizations, has made considerable <coughs> contributions to state government and the people of District 27 with his direct work in 1,485 pieces of legislation and countless hours of support. And whereas Paul Cowan, through his public service has, service, has been a contributor to the betterment of higher education in Texas and has provided exemplary uh, service in support of the growth and dynamic uh, uh, change experienced by Texas Southmost College and whose efforts helped achieve the precedent-setting partnership that joins Texas Southmost College with the University of Texas at Brownsville. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that on the 27th day of August 2009, the Board of Trustees of the Texas Southmost College District recognizes the distinguished public service career and contributions of Paul Thomas, Paul Charles Thomas Cowan to Texas Senate District 27, <coughs> higher education, uh, and Texas Southwest College. Do I hear, is there a, well, let's, yes. let, let's give them a, a round of applause for us. And I'll entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. Uh, uh, moved by uh, Rosemary Breedlove and seconded by Renee Thuttis. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Before we ask Paul to come up and say a few words, I, I want to say a few words about him because I I've known Paul since, uh, uh, just like I've known Graciela since I was a little kid. And my dad was his principal, and Paul was one of his favorite students. And so, <laughs> you know, Paul used to come by the house, and, and you know, Paul's been involved in community <coughs> affairs, I think, since he was five years old. And uh, he's, he's always been an integral part of this community, and, and he's, he, he's, you know, of course, served the, the, the Senator Lucio uh, well for years. But, but I can tell you that, that uh, there are a lot of people that have worked in public office and, and have worked for, you know, public officials and, and don't seem to know how to get things done. Paul knows, Paul Cowan knows how to get things done. And he, and he gets them done with lightning speed. And he treats everybody the same. And, you know, that's what I will remember about Paul is that if you needed something, he, he never ignored you no matter who you were. And, and uh, he has a lot of friends in this community and across the state of Texas. And it's, it, it's our privilege to honor you here tonight, Paul. And I'm, with that, I'll ask you to say a few words. Uh, I don't get to say many words. <laughs> <laughs> I usually write this something. is your turn no, no. yeah this is my turn I usually write something for the senator or I do something but this time I'll speak by the way I remember very clearly mr. chairman when your father used to come to the gas station I had over there on Lakeside super service on the corner of Lakeside Boulevard and Central Boulevard I bought that gas station when I was in high school and they found out that I wasn't 18 years old so I had to go recruit Ralph to come and <laughs> buy it from me or they were going to take it away but wow. your father faithfully used to come over there and buy gas for 14.9 cents a gallon 
and uh, and I remember it was you. Oh, it was a whole bunch of boys. You were you were you were just a, a one of five. Yeah. You'd get out and you'd walk around the car and everything else, and it was uh, I can remember it like yesterday. But anyway, uh, I've learned so many things, and 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 you know, it's like anything else. When I put my heart into it, I, I, I make it happen. And there's a lot of things that happened because I was in the car business oh, for like 17 or 18 years and I just wanted to make a change. And I hooked up with Eddie because I had a workers' comp problem and, and, and it was killing my payroll, you know what I mean? It was just really killing me. And I got in with him and then we formed this little team and I just went from there and everything I did I wanted to improve it, and I wanted to to really, really make a difference. And I, and I, I mean, certain things I got involved in. When you know the 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 uh, UT uh, TSC, I mean, UT Brownsville uh, uh, TSC partnership. I remember that we were over there at the Boca Chica Towers, and Julia Garcia. We had a little meeting over there, and we came together, and we put that. Finally, we got that bill put together right and everything. And then after that, we turned in the uh, University of Texas at Brownsville. We took it away from the Pan American. You were kind of like a satellite. And you know, it's just growing and growing. And then took South Texas Community College. It was a little piece of a, of a, a TSTC in, in Mac Allen. It was a satellite campus. It had 493 students. And today, it's got 28,000 students. Okay, and that was a big accomplishment in our, and then long comes that we had an opportunity, we keep pushing forward and keep pushing forward. And believe me, I push. I mean, if you have a TRB or, or you know, which is tuition revenue bond for a building, I mean, I got a, a lot of interest among Lieutenant Governor staff and, 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 and <coughs> most of the other member staffs in the legislature about trying to do something for South Texas and keep reminding them about all the South Texas initiative. And I never, I never forget those things, you know, because I, I, I kind of grew up with it and I saw it happen. I remember these settlements real clearly. And I mean, I don't want to take up a whole bunch of time here, but there's just certain things that happened in my term over there. And it's not over yet, okay? Because I mean, I'm just getting off state payroll. I still have to volunteer, <laughs> okay? <laughs> But there's, we created this regional academic health science center, which is a, it's a satellite campus off of an extension off of the health science center of San Antonio. But this session, we quietly got it through and we passed and now we have the University of Texas Health Science Center, South Texas, which is going to be a component of the University of Texas system, just like the University of Texas Health Science Center, Houston, San Antonio, Tyler, and it'll take us about six to eight more years to be able to build that thing, and then Board of Regents has the authority just to dump it into there, and it becomes a full-fledged medical school just like overnight. It's going to be built differently than anything <coughs> else that's ever been built, and I'm going to concentrate trying to make that really happen, and I think everybody in Brownsville really needs to get rolling and get prepared for it and we need to get a foundation put together. There's a lot of money that we can bring to this area here to be able to, to do a lot of things. We just have to put our minds together and I'm gonna concentrate my efforts on that. And then, you know, lastly, I just wanna tell you that, you know, uh, you know the, the, the hardest things and the, and, and, and the saddest things that I ever had happen in the legislature was the, the, the saddest thing was when we lost the dental school, okay? I mean, we've had it. It was coming here and they pulled the plug on it because it was just so much controversy. And that's something we threw, it, we just threw it aside. And now it's still another 10, maybe five, seven years from now before it'll materialize. But it's coming back, it'll come back. But it could have been 10 years ahead of its time because 10 years ago, one Saturday morning, I remember Dr. Howell and them came in there and, and the plug was pulled on that and they didn't pursue that anymore. And then the hardest thing was trying to pass that I remember was the uh, Rio Grande Regional Water Authority. Anytime you touch water, I mean, these, these irrigators and farmers and cities and everybody, and we, we pushed hard and finally after having a historic 
kind of a, a committee hearing, we had to recess. They usually put a bill aside and wait till the next uh, next day or the next time we have a committee hearing. But Senator Armbruster, who was the chair of Natural Resources, he re he recessed that bill for about three hours until we went into the next room, and we fought it out. And we came back and we passed the bill out of the out of the committee, and we went on to pass the what is now known as the Rio Grande Regional Water Authority, which was the last tributary in Texas without an authority on it. So this is the one that's going to make sure that you have water. Of course, Browns will always have water because they have an excess water permit, you know. <laughs> and they're at the end, they're gonna get it. But the rest of the cities will have life, okay? And, this, and it's gonna be, and we're not gonna sell away our water rights. And there's just a whole bunch of things that you don't think, but they all affect education because you can't build if you don't have water. I mean, you just gotta have it. Anyway, I'll just end it there let you know I'm very grateful to you. I'm very grateful to the senator for allowing me to be able to work with him all these years because he gave me an opportunity that, you know, it, it, it was another chapter in my life. You know, I kind of had a few chapters there as I went along. And now I'm going to move to another chapter and I'm going to get involved in the drainage and I'm going to get involved in the rack and making sure the foundation's put up and I'm going to become pretty involved in almost a, a bunch of different things that don't require legislation anymore. Now it's time. I, I got to go work outside of the, the little kind of a, a circle there because there's this so, so far you can go with the legislature and then you need to put it in place here another way. And with that, I'll end. And if anybody has any questions or want to say anything. Well, well we have a little <laughs> gift for you here. So. Oh, we got a little gift? A little frame resolution. <laughs> so so you, you, want, you want to do that? No, no, no. We, we, you can pass. <clears throat> Paul and I were classmates in, in Pan Am back in, when both of us were in our teens. You remember? <laughs> of, course, of course I remember. College World Series. Yes. <laughs> we uh, went. <laughs> Same airplane. <laughs> uh, Paul, I, I just want to express my gratitude for your service to not only this community, for, for, for the service uh, that you've given to the state of Texas. You have not only been good to, to Senator Lucio, but you've been good to, to us to this community, and uh, you've always greeted me with a smile, and uh, you've never forgotten where you came from, and that's that's very important to me. And uh, again, uh, uh, with with deep deep gratitude, I, I thank you for your service. Uh, thank you very uh, much, Dr. Robles. Yeah, Paul, the same uh, with me. That uh, every time uh, that we've called you, uh, because we know that. You and the center are very busy, but you, you always took time to take our, our calls, uh, issues at the Texas State Board uh, of uh, Medicine, medical, uh, anything. Uh, anything. It's, it was just, you've been an amazing person. I think that uh, this has been, public service has been your, your calling, and you've, you, you, you've done exceptionally well, and we thank you for that. Thank you very much. I also like to ditto that. Uh, Dr. Robles is a doctor, and you'll answer his calls more, but I will No, I'll answer, answer yours, too. The answer's there. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's the point. Other people won't. And, you know, you, you answer. Every time I call him, you would, you would pick up the phone and answer. And the senator does, too. And, and uh, those are issues that, you know, mean a lot to us, and they meant a lot to you. And, yeah, and, I know. Uh, and we truly, truly uh, appreciate it. And, and I'm not trying to, uh, Dr. Robles, my, my, my dear friend, and, and, and uh, but uh, again, for, for you all to be as personable and as caring and, and loving towards this community and doing your best that you could do with what was going on, we truly appreciate it, well, sincerely. Thank and you thank so you. very much. And I'll, I will still be available. And Anybody that calls me on anything, and if there's any kind of a problem in that office, because I think I left it in pretty good shape, but if it's not, <laughs> Somebody please call me and tell me because I will go over and talk to the senator. <laughs> we will take and you up on that. See if we can get it. Everybody's got my cell phone number. <laughs> and I haven't changed. By the way, my email address is going to change. It's going to be pcowan at rgb.rr.com. So it's real easy. And I'm not going to go anywhere. And Tammy and I are just going to, you know, I'm, this is my community and I love it. And it's actually. Brownsville is no longer like you think Brownsville. Brownsville is, is almost all of Cameron County and all of Hidalgo. It's just the region. 
You know, we're not, a, we're not individual cities anymore. We're, we're blended. I mean, I saw that happen in Hidalgo County. I saw fire and Donna, and I saw all those problems they had in annexation and everything else. And it's all one big area now. And, and we're going to be the same way in the very near future. And, you know, it just, Brownsville is all the way to San Benito now. <laughs> It's anyway. kind of, yeah, it's kind of a sore subject with Sam Anita too. So. Hey, I couldn't fix their problem this time, but I will. I think Mr. Time. Campidano would like to well, say something. I just want to say, you know, I guess for me, I, I didn't realize there was a Senate before there was an Eddie Lucio and a Paul Cowan. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you've been a tremendous asset and certainly helped. And uh, I think, uh, you know, all of the accolades that have been mentioned here today are certainly well deserved. And uh, we know that you're not going to uh, leave the notion of public service and but Paul I, I think a lot of us just personally uh, not necessarily as elected officials or what have you but just personally say thank you because uh, regardless of one's title or whatever you were always there to assist in whatever capacity whether it was providing direction uh, providing advice or and many times what people need a lot is providing encouragement so thank you so much yeah. and I look forward to continue working Mr. Director, I appreciate that. And we, we, at this time, we'd like to uh, you to join us for a picture. And, uh, Absolutely. Frame resolution. Yeah, no, it is, man. He, he's, I mean, he really jumped on things. He, uh, he didn't have to call him twice. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, our next agenda, our next agenda item is uh, speakers to agenda items. I understand we have uh, Mr. Uh, Kenneth Leak uh, here for from uh, uh, the Shadow Days board. Kenneth. Sorry, Kenneth, I, 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 I called you up. <laughs> Good afternoon. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Zavaleta. I'm Kenneth Leake. I'm the president of Chower Days for this coming year. And the sole reason why I'm here is to respectfully request that the board, Mr. Chairman, put an item on the agenda for your next regular call board meeting. I believe it's September 17th to allow Chower Days to make a presentation and to respond to any questions you may have regarding our request to place the Chower Days Carnival at the TSC iTech Center parking lot or a portion thereof. 
to give you a little background, Char Days and the administration uh, of the university have been discussing, communicating, emailing, meeting regarding this particular topic for the last several months. Um, last Friday we met with the administration and unfortunately the decision of the administration was to deny Charo Day's request to utilize these properties. And this is why I'm here to approach the board and to request this particular item be put on the agenda. Thank we'll, you very much. We'll be happy to place it on the agenda and, and you know, look forward to, to discussing this matter further, I guess, at that time. Well, I look forward to attending the yeah. meeting on September 17th to make this presentation. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak this evening. I wish you all a good meeting and a good evening. Good to see you, and you're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes uh, from the June 18th uh, meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at those? And so I'll entertain a motion. Moved uh, by Mr. Torres, is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Breedlove, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next item is uh, Dr. Sabaleta uh, will present a board briefing. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Oliveira, members. This uh, is it's with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to stand in for President Garcia and especially to provide you with this brief board briefing on what we all know and love as the Texas Southmost College Endowment Scholarship. The Texas Southmost College Endowment Scholarship Program will be recognized next month for successfully fulfilling its 20-year commitment to the U.S. Department of Education, to the TSC Board, to donor foundations, and most importantly, to the hundreds of local, statewide, local and statewide donors who contributed an effort that many, in 1989, thought was impossible. That is raising, because most people here weren't here with us in 1989, raising $1 million in the community, one of the poorest communities in the nation. Just over 20 years ago, Texas Southmost College was awarded a challenge grant from the U.S. Department of Education's Developing Institutions Program. The federal government challenged the college to raise $1 million in only 18 months. And if this huge sum was raised, the Department of Education would match the $1 million two to one for a total of $2 million. <coughs> if the college was unsuccessful in its fund drive and failed to raise the total amount in the 18-month deadline, it would not receive the $2 million, it wouldn't receive anything. The college had the opinion, the option, excuse me, to attempt to raise a lesser amount, lesser than $1 million was available to us, but that was inconceivable for us. It would have been easier, but would not have accomplished the goal of setting up the guaranteed scholarship program for the children of the college district. Dismissing the safe route the Texas College, the Texas Southwest College Board of Trustees decided to take the challenge, accept the challenge. Many would have allowed the dream to fade in the face of the tremendous obstacles. It was daunting, I recall it well. Our community university serves one of the poorest regions in the U.S. <coughs> At that time, our area had double-digit unemployment and an average income of less than $6,700 a year. And a quarter of the people had less than a fifth grade education in our region. Yet the entire community came together behind this effort with car washes, with black tie dinners, with pancake breakfasts, a few corporate gifts, and a last minute telethon. And it really did come down to the last minute. Today, almost 13,000 students in the Texas Southmost College District have received $3.7 million in scholarship dollars. While the corpus of the fund has grown to approximately $4.6 million. In addition, 
An active board of community volunteers has provided 20 years of sustained, honest, and effective stewardship and guidance to the endowment fund. A symbol of good public service often too rarely found in our communities. This effort was a milestone for Texas Southmost College. It was the first such significant fundraising effort in our history. It was begun just one year after the first general obligation bond was passed. And it served to nourish the momentum that was building on this campus, which has yet to subside. It became the first such scholarship endowment to be established by a community college in the state of Texas. Moreover, the scholarship criteria were ahead of its time. It focused on the rigorous coursework needed to prepare middle and high school students for college level work. And eventually, and this is truly outstanding, it served as the seed idea for what is now a statewide Texas grant adopted <coughs> by law by the state of Texas and was a precursor for the invention of the TEA recommended curriculum for all Texas high schools. So it had clearly had at least statewide impact and probably impact beyond that that we don't, are not aware of. The, the broad-based community fundraising effort garnered national recognition when a story appeared in the Chronicle for Higher Education documenting the effort. Each year, each year since, the story is told at conferences and workshops and at the Harvard Institute for Educational Management, where Dr. Garcia lectures each summer. The commitment of this community to inspire audiences across the nation was unlimited and is unlimited. I invite you, we invite you, we the, the administration, invite you, the Texas Southmost College Board and the community, all staff and students in the community, to celebrate with us the 20th anniversary of the TSC Endowment Scholarship on September 17th, that's your next board meeting, as was, was pointed out by Kim Lee, we will have a celebration at 7 p.m. immediately following the board meeting. There, will be there we will recognize the champions of this great effort. We'll also have an opportunity to hear from the recipients of the very first scholarships, now all grown up and making their own positive contributions to our communities. We look forward to seeing you at this important anniversary next month. You know, it's truly, uh, uh, it's truly a remarkable thing. It fell, it fell um, and, and you guys have followed it all along, every step of the way for, for uh, 20 years. And it fell uh, to some of us early on to have to tweak the program and to make it more rigorous. And it's interesting that the community was up up to that challenge. And so from the initial rigor, academic rigor, that was required of middle school and high school students, about six, seven, eight years into the program, we made it even more rigorous. And that, was, that did not uh, deter our local community from stepping up to the plate and receiving, and as they continue to receive this very fall semester, the Texas Southmost College Endowment Scholarship. I cannot personally think of anything that has been more important in jumpstarting our university participation than your program. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Dr. Sala. <laughs> At this time, we're going to convene into executive session. We'll be back shortly. We're back from executive session, and uh, we do have some items, I guess, to approve out of executive session. So uh, the first one would be a contract and resolution for purchase of lot 20, block 9, Colonia Alta Vista, subdivision, Brownsville, Texas. I'll entertain a motion at this time to approve the earnest money contract and resolution for the acquisition of lot 20, block 9, in the amount of 35000 So moved. Moved by Dr. Robles, Second. seconded by uh, Mr. Torres. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 
The, ex the next item uh, on the agenda is a, a report from the uh, Business Affairs Partnership Committee, and I'll call on Mr. Campidano to make that report. Mr. Chairman, the Business Affairs Partnership Committee met on the 20th, uh, actually met on the 20th. Um, Trustee Chester Gonzalez and, and I were uh, in attendance at the meeting, uh, along with staff uh, the, and members of the committee. The uh, first item on the agenda was consideration possible action on a change order for the design build solutions for the Fort Brown Memorial Center roof project. Uh, uh, the change order is needed to pay for additional work related to the roof repairs at the Fort Brown Memorial uh, due to anticipated work and materials needed to repair the roof deck. Uh, you know, I think anytime you do a, a roof rehab and you start tearing up stuff, you're going to find other things. Uh, this is change order number two. Uh, the base bid of the project was $328,106. Uh, there was a change order number one in the amount of $9,531.60. This change order is for $65,205 that, if approved, would bring the total project cost to $402,846.60. Uh, physical plant was there to explain to the committee uh, the nature of the repairs and the reason for the repairs. Uh, the committee uh, recommends and I move to accept uh, the change order for additional repairs to the um, uh, roof at the Fort Brown in the amount of $65,205 and authorize the Assistant Vice President for Facility Service to execute the change order. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, it's a motion uh, by Mr. Campinano, seconded by Ms. Garza. Are all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda was consideration possible action on an interlocal agreement with the City of Brownsville uh, and the University of Texas Brownsville, Texas Southmost College. This is, a, this is an agreement to install a traffic light at the intersection of University Boulevard and Ringgold Road. Um, the estimated completion date for uh, this project, if we uh, are to approve going forward, would be December 2009. Uh, the uh, staff uh, uh, has reviewed it, uh, also recommends it. There was a recommendation to the committee for uh, approval of the interlocal agreement. The agreement is in the amount of $143,964.11. Uh, uh, there were questions raised regarding um, uh, the nature of doing this, and the bottom line is that uh, this is at the request of the university. Uh, this is a very hectic intersection, if you've seen it, and even more so now with the Rick Center at full blown. And uh, if uh, we request it be done, it's going to cost approximately uh, the amount I read. Uh, the committee did recommend, and I do move to accept the interlocal agreement with the City of Browns and the University of Texas at Browns and Texas Southmost College in the amount of $143,964.11 to authorize and authorize the Assistant Vice President for Facility Services uh, to execute the agreement. Uh, there's a motion by Mr. Campiano. Is there a second? <clears throat> second by Mr. Torres? Second, yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the only thing, again, is to emphasize to work with the city to try to get that expedited as quickly as possible. Uh, that's a concern for everyone. The next item on the agenda was a consideration and an action on renewal of general liability educators legal crime and auto insurance policies uh, the renewal for this year's premium uh, you have in your package a list of the schedules for coverage nothing has changed the only thing that changes is this year the premium uh, is being reduced somewhat from uh, last year the total amount of the premium uh, is three thirty eight thousand eight hundred and fifty seven dollars which is three hundred and eighty two dollars less than last year's total the committee recommends and I move to accept the renewal of the general liability, educators legal, crime and auto insurance policies in the amount of 38857 uh, as presented. So, second. It's been moved by Mr. Campinano and seconded by Dr. Robles. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> uh, the next item is we have <coughs> the uh, uh, presentation on uh, the TSC budget for fiscal year 2000 in nine in 2010, and at this time I'd like to call on Melba Sanchez to do a review of the budget. Uh, for the TSC board, this would be the second reading. We've had it, uh, uh, we've had an opportunity to review it, but it's still, I think, merit uh, just review in case there's any questions. So with that, I turn it over to Melba. 
Thank you, Mr. Campirano. Members of the board, Mr. Chairman and Provost, um, we presented the fiscal year 10 budget to you for first reading at your June meeting. And at this time, uh, we, are, we are presenting it to you for a second reading and for your approval tonight. In June, we discussed very briefly, and I'll, I'll try to keep this as quick as briefly as possible, we discussed the challenges coming for fiscal year 10. Those challenges being tax revenues from assessed valuation, um, the increase decreasing for the coming year. Uh, the, we have received our certified totals from the appraisal district, and those totals were uh, present to us a 1.82% increase in assessed valuations. I will remind you last year we had approximately an 8% increase and prior to that we were seeing anywhere between 9 and 14% increases. So this is, this is a pretty significant decrease for the coming year. In addition, we included in that 93% collection rates and we have adjusted the budget for what um, we call the effective rate, which raises the same amount of revenues as in the prior year. Investment earnings we're projecting to be down, um, and this is in light of what's happening in the economy and uh, lower returns on, on our money. Insurance premiums and coverage will be up as a result of adding over 250,000 square feet. Uh, these are the new buildings that, are, that have come online and are due to come online in the next year. And next year, last but not least, next year is an election year, and so we have um, built into this budget costs not only for a general election, but also for a runoff election in the event that that should occur. And the amount of how much? And the amount of how much as far as the election? Uh, that amount is 175 total, $175,000 total. We spoke to you about the budget priorities, um, those being to continue to provide instructional services through the partnership, to continue to fund scholarship programs, and we have approximately 3.3% I mean 3.3 million for scholarships, to fund capital improvements on campus, to continue to address those deferred maintenance needs, um, to maintain ac appropriate insurance coverage and fund reserves for insurance to manage our property acquisitions to address the, the continuing uh, need on campus for space and to complete the bond projects. And certainly, last but not least, to maintain an operating fund balance of, of three months' worth of operations. We went through and we showed you the projected revenues for the coming year being $57.6 million. 79% um, of that, which is approximately $45 million, is contributed to the partnership in order to provide those instructional services. 21% of that is used for the operations um, that we will talk about momentarily. And those, those, uh, the 21 percent is comprised primarily of the tax revenue, some auxiliary and, uh, income, <coughs> and the lease money that, from UTB. Our operating revenue breakdown, approximately 85 percent coming from the taxes, that's 10.8 million. The lease revenue of 1.3 million. S investment income of, of approximately 100,000 and about 400,000 in auxiliary. The net changes anticipated for the coming year, taxes, our, our overall tax revenue was projected to increase by $296,000. Last year, our increase um, that we were working with was approximately a million dollars. So this is a little less than a third of what we had to work with in the prior year. Um, interest earnings projected to be down approximately 77000 and our auxiliary income projected to be up just slightly. We have some agreements for the Raymondville facility and for the bookstore that we're hoping will bring in um, a little additional income there. New expenditures, um, insurance 284000 This is for the new buildings that are coming online once again. The elections, uh, Mr. Torres, as we had mentioned, total 185000 Auxiliaries, uh, we have additional costs for the, uh, the continued uh, bringing of online of, of condominium units out on the peninsula. And last but not least, M&O um, of, of $5,000. 
we have gone through the budget and we have cut uh, 150,000 out of capital construction. We had made a commitment to fund 150 of the capital construction of the new new projects, um, and that commitment goes away in the next coming fiscal year. We have also cut campus improvements and repair by 140,000, um, anticipating the use of maintenance tax notes for the coming year. And last but not least, we, we <coughs> uh, reduced property acquisitions by 25,000, still allowing us the ability to purchase approximately nine lots and eight condos, give or take. The overall summary, we, as, as we had um, discussed, the net changes in revenue being a plus of 240,000. We have new expenditures of 552,000. So we were looking for 312,000 in order to balance this budget. We were able to reduce expenses by 315, so that left us a plus of about $3,000. Your operating expenses, and this is after the commitments to the partnership have been met, uh, total approximately 12.6 million, 3.3 million going towards scholarships, 3.4 million towards the operations. This is inclusive of, of your insurance costs. Um, commitments to UTB of approximately 800,000, capital improvements of 2.4 million, property acquisitions of 1.2 million, and other expenses of 1.5, and that, that includes your auxiliary uh, enterprises. At this time, I'll take any questions you may have regarding the budget. Perhaps I missed it, but did you mention anything that has to do with legal, legal counsel fees that we've spent last year and this year? Um, so that is included in the um, in the general op in the M and O operations. Um, we are budgeting, I believe, approximately one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the next coming year, and that is an increase over the current year. How, how much did we have last year? This last year we had one hundred and fifty one hundred thousand dollars in the budget. We are presenting to you tonight an amendment of $30,000 to that line item for Did, a total did we use the 100000 last year? Yes, sir. We used more. We used more because we, we, we fought the, the fence fight. We had the, well, you had other things. But, but, but that was election a... election lawsuit, fence yeah. fight, yeah. other issues. But, but the, the lion's but share of it was the fence. In our discussion, we spent close to $96,000 on, on one issue. Is that correct? Over two years. Over two years. Over period? two years, yes. And this is it was what pretty much half and Roberto half. Has, Roberto yeah. has mentioned... Uh, yeah, but so Joe Rubio has uh, continued to file <coughs> or, or to try to um, uh, still be uh, considered to uh, run for the Texas Southwest College uh, trustee uh, board. And uh, once again, we've had to uh, rely on, on counsel to help us uh, and assist us with that. But the total was like $96,000 in that particular issue, is that correct? Over two fiscal years. Right. It, it's pretty much, it's been half and half. Mr. Half that we've spent in the current fiscal year and half that we spent last year, which was the election year. Mr. Gonzalez and I would, would argue that any money spent on lawyers is money well spent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we'd have any support <laughs> for that. Uh, not, not when it's no, money. It, it, <laughs> uh, I, I reviewed the expenditures. They're certainly in line and fair, and, and, uh, uh, and, and we got good results. We've gotten, that's the other thing is that, you know, you can spend this kind of money and not always get, but we've got great results. So we have fortunately had to do. We had to take on the federal government, and now we've, we've had to, to fight this election challenge. So sorry. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Melba, do you still have, uh, is that the rest, of, is that the end of your presentation? I, uh, that's the end. Okay. I just wanted to, to thank my staff for working tires, tirelessly on this budget. Um, we have our budget analyst here, Claudia Cortina, with us tonight, and I thank her, Nancy Saldana, Rosa Ruiz, Zoe Lavasquez, and Julian Diveros for all of the work they did in preparing this budget. It's, it's been a tough year, but certainly we, we got through it. And, I couldn't do it without them. So I thank them all. Thank we appreciate it, and we appreciate it that you bring us a budget that's not going to require us to raise taxes either, <laughs> <And that laughs> which is, is the next item. Yes, sir. And, and that is balance. So that is balance. That's right. Consideration. Yeah. And as you can see from the presentation, there were no substantial changes from uh, the first reading. So the committee recommends, and I would move to adopt the TSC district budget for fiscal year 2009 2010 as presented. 
Second. Uh, it's been moved by Mr. Campiano, second by Ms. Uh, Garza. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda was for consideration and action on budget amendments for fiscal year 2009, the current fiscal year. Uh, budget amendments uh, 09-011, adjust expenditures in the general fund. Uh, budget amendment uh, 09-12, adjust expenditures in the auxiliary fund. And budget amendment 09013, adjust expenses in the campus facilities fund. Uh, you have in your package uh, the effective changes of those and uh, you know one of the comments that you were uh, making right now Mr. Torres you can see in the general operating fund uh, increase on the legal fees from the hundred thousand to 130 uh, committee reviewed these uh, committee recommends and I approve uh, uh, budget or to approve budget amendments 090-011 09-012 and uh, 09-013 for fiscal year 2009 is presented Second. It's been uh, moved by Mr. Campiano, second uh, by Dr. Robles. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. The last item of the agenda was a presentation by Mr. Juan Mendoza with Long and Chilton. He is the uh, independent audit firm of Long and Chilton who does the district's uh, audit review, the financial uh, report for uh, uh, what will be the fiscal year uh, just ending. And there was a presentation about uh, appointment of an audit committee. And what came out of that committee was that uh, uh, a recommendation that the chair uh, appoint a uh, audit committee uh, for uh, uh, this coming year. And uh, uh, so that was, uh, again, uh, a recommendation from the committee to uh, present to, to you, Mr. Chairman, that you uh, uh, look to uh, appoint an audit committee that would be essentially the beginning of, of a process in which uh, uh, this role or this board would uh, 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 work with staff and the external auditor in the uh, process of conducting and preparing the financial statements uh, uh, for the audit that will uh, consist of the 2009 report. I think that's an excellent idea and I'll uh, with, be talking I guess to several of you uh, regarding uh, input about how we should structure that committee and uh, uh, we'll make that decision I guess maybe for the before the next meeting. Okay, thank you, that Mr. Cuppin. concludes the report. The, Mr. Uh, Chair, Mr. Chairman, can I uh, just ask Alan for a status um, on the um, on the street, on, on Ringgold Street, since we mentioned the traffic light, the, the there, amount there, of traffic. There was a lot of traffic there last night. There's been, been a lot of traffic, and now that we have the, the, uh, the, uh, the soccer games there, that, 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 that street. And there'll be another one next week, uh, and, yes. And, uh, we, you know, the city is telling us they are going to commence work on that road sometime in the month of September. Well, we need to get that agreement signed and delivered to them ASAP so they have no reason to say we're waiting on the agreement. So It'll be delivered in the morning. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Mr. Yes. Butters? Okay. The uh, uh, next item in, uh, in the agenda is adoption of the 2009 TSC District Ad Valorem Tax Rate. I'll call on Melba Sanchez to present this item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Texas Constitution and Property Tax Code embody the concept of truth in taxation to require the district to comply with certain steps in adopting a tax rate on an annual basis. The district published the effective and rollback tax rates information in the Valley Morning Star and Brownsville Herald on August 7th, then held a meeting to discuss the tax rate on August the 24th. At this meeting, staff recommended and the board proposed a tax rate that would raise the same amount of revenues as in the prior year and does not constitute a tax increase. The proposed rate is the effective rate of .161924 cents per hundred dollars of valuation. Since this proposal did not constitute a tax increase, public hearings were not required. I would like to note that in the process of setting the tax rate, the district identified the needs for the upcoming fiscal year and adopted the budget that was just presented a moment ago, inclusive of the tax revenues generated by adopting the effective tax rate. Mr. Chairman, a motion is required at this time to uh, adopt the, both the m and and the debt rate. And this is the final step towards adopting that 2009 rate. 
Uh, I, I'll uh, entertain a motion then to adopt a maintenance and operation tax rate of uh, 0.108949 and a debt tax rate of uh, 0 0.052975 per $100 valuation. For a combined rate of 161924. Thank you. Second. It's been uh, moved by Mr. Uh, Second, uh, Mr. Campionato. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Make a comment if I may. I'm, Please. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, well, one is that, you know, some entities are facing the difficult challenge of trying to do a balanced budget and, and, and continue to uh, uh, provide the same level of service as prior year. And I, I, I'm glad that we're in a position of not having to consider raising taxes. Uh, it is uh, not a good time to talk about raising anything. So uh, the fact that we were able to essentially adopt the effective tax rate uh, uh, means that there will be uh, virtually no impact to uh, the taxpayers who uh, uh, from uh, the TSC district from uh, 19 or from 2008 to 2009 so uh, and, and you know again the staff did present a balanced budget uh, we did have to make some cuts but in the end uh, I'm glad that we're not in the position to have to consider uh, hitting the taxpayers with the additional burden of additional taxes so uh, hats off to staff Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't uh, don't go <laughs> no, anywhere because <laughs> uh, the next item on the agenda is the third quarter financial statements and investment report. Financial statements for the third quarter and the investment report are, have been included in your binders. They are being provided for informational purposes only and do not require any action. These statements are for the fiscal year 2008-2009 and cover operations from September through May of 2009. September 2008 through May of 2009. The investment report is also included in your binders. Um, total interest earned for the third quarter totaled 155,000 and this interest is being generated through the district's various checking and savings and CD accounts with Compass Bank. At this time, I will take any questions you may have regarding the financial statements or the uh, investment report. Okay, that's not an action yeah. item, so. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's Thank starting you. to get a little bit better, you know. So uh, <laughs> they used to be kind of gloomy, right? Um, still gloomy. It's still especially, gloomy, but better. Especially if you look at interest income. Yeah. But yeah, well, that 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 unfortunate. But the the, the other the, the stock market is going up, and so. Uh, Hopefully, good t better times are ahead. Uh, next item on the agenda is construction. Let's oh. say something. I do want to uh, recognize um, Thelma's, Melba. Melba's team because I know how they work, and and it's I guess we never appreciate it because it, it's not a <laughs> it's not a flashy <laughs> profession, but it gets the the, the university going, and, and and we're very proud of your team. Thank you. Thank you. It takes a great leader too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. You did a great job. Now I'll call on Dr. Pearson to give the construction report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There is an awful lot of work going on around campus, aside from the obvious fact of the new buildings that continue to go up. So let me deal with the smaller, the smaller items, which uh, I think are no less important to the integrity, the aesthetic uh, character of the campus. And we'll start off in the construction report looking at the commissary building, which uh, is progressing very nicely. You'll see some of the pictures here. The, here's the, the side. I guarantee you that uh, slab of concrete you see is going to disappear in the months to come. Uh, the, the ceilings are now going in on the main floor, the second floor where Dr. Ruth Ann Ragland's office will be. You can see here the, the uh, woodwork, the detailing is completed on this floor. And you can see some of the spectacular detailing. This is, uh, this is red oak. Here is the, uh, the floor in the restroom on the main floor. And you can see uh, very, very elegant. Here we move up to the third floor with the inclined support beams. Uh, we're putting in some, you can see here, yellow pine, beaded yellow pine tongue and groove, which will go part of the way up the roof, and then there'll be drywall at the very top. We're now down in the first floor. Uh, some call it the basement. You can see that we've put in some uh, bronze tinned glass separating some of the workspaces, and very shortly we're going to be flooding the entire space with light, making all of the floors equally agreeable. The Commandant's quarters, uh, Dr. Garcia has asked us to accelerate the work schedule on this. 
uh, in order to have the facility ready for the arrival of our new provost, Alan Artebis, uh, in late October. Uh, so we've transferred some physical plant uh, workers over to the Commandant's quarters to assist Larry Loft. Uh, the foam insulation and the roofs is going in. Here are some of the original uh, ceiling beams, which Larry and his crew have painted. You'll be able to see here some of the new ceiling that is going in. Uh, Larry has ordered some of uh, quarter sawn uh, double doors, oak doors for the main floor. You can see some of the color scheme here. The painting is virtually complete. Uh, there's a yellow color scheme up uh, upstairs, similar to what we have here in the Gorgas boardroom. Here is the rear staircase. Some of the beams from the original structure have been turned into the handrail for that uh, for that stair. Ringgold sidewalk. Uh, the the rec center, as we know, is open, 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 and what we've been lacking is uh, additional uh, additional places for pedestrians to be able to to access the facility. We've over the past several weeks completed the the sidewalk from the student union down toward the rec. And you can see it's very much in keeping with the character of the sidewalks we have on the main campus. That is some, some of the pavers inset. The cavalry building is under construction once again. Two of the wings, the cavalry building, as you know, is an elongated T, actually three separate original buildings under a single roof. One of them was done uh, about a year ago for the Center for Gravitational Wave Astronomy. Here are some of, the, some of the photos when the main portion of the facility was campus police. All of a sudden, the restroom is gone. You can see there are double arch doors. One of them was in the men's room, and now it will become one of two entrances into the, into the facility. You can see in uh, this section, this is the, the wing of cavalry closest to the bookstore. Uh, the plumbing roughing is, go is going in now. Uh, the ceiling has been installed. This is going to be a suite of offices as well as mechanical rooms, restrooms serving the entire facility. Here we're moving into where used to be campus police. Chief Cardoso's former office is there in the center toward the back. You can see the, uh, the arches marching down the center of the facility, reminiscent at least to some of us of the aqueduct of Segovia. This is going to be a, not, not exactly the same, but very close. Uh, going to be a fantastic facility, and uh, we expect to have this completed uh, for the faculty and for staff and our Provost Emeritus uh, sometime in the spring. A uh, last hurrah for the Campus Security Center. We've seen, seen this. We've added the, the final sidewalks on the facility. And here you can see a series of uh, PUB shots of them removing some of the overhead power lines. As is typical, our custom on campus, whenever possible, we remove the overhead lines. We install underground lines uh, for aesthetic purposes and safety purposes. And you can see here the laying of the sidewalk. This is running from the faculty parking lot near Eidman. Uh, down over toward uh, Ridgely Road, and here it is as we're moving toward completion. Does uh, physical plant construct the transformer pads? No, no, that's done by PUB. Because they were pretty even, pretty uh, level. Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I believe that concludes my portion. Don't go, no, you got to get in trouble there. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'll hear. The, there is. A, well, there's no comment from staff, Mr. Kempe. I'd like to turn this. Great. I just want to comment. And I'll, I'd like to invite Veronica Mendez to the lectern to talk about the new construction. Thank you, Dr. Pearson. Uh, members of the board, always a pleasure to present the progress on our projects. And uh, the University Boulevard Library and classroom buildings are open for business. We were able to, to open doors on August 24th for classes to start and take place there. It was a tremendous effort from your staff and members of uh, the construction community to make th this happen. And we're just happy and delighted to have all the students enjoy this wonderful facility. You see some of the spaces that we've created for them in the classroom building, as well as the services they are now receiving at the University Boulevard Library. And you see now the uh, some of the computer labs open there and just students taking advantage of that wonderful facility for them. And we're just delighted that that took place, although the books were moved and um, they're ready for classes. Another achievement uh, over the summer was uh, the completion of the parking lot at the rec center. Long awaited, 139 spaces, and you can see it's well utilized for, uh, for that facility. Uh, we had, along with that project, a sidewalk connection going through there. 
and also preparing the field to host our games for their Scorpion team. And uh, we uh, did a series of improvements, including the scoreboard, some of the netting, the backstop netting that you see there, uh, but some of the, goal, the uh, goals and benches for our students just in time uh, for their games and the wins that they had. And you see that that scoreboard was made so we could record those wins for the last three games that they held there as well. So we're very proud of our teams and happy to have them on our campus. I don't want to be p some picky, but uh, the scoreboard lacked a horn. Lacked a horn, okay. <laughs> I'm sure there was lots of cheering going on. Well, because when, when the half ends, it, it, the horn blows. And yeah. Now we, the we, center we, for... We can appropriate some money for a horn and you can uh, let you sound it. Okay? <laughs> I just said, I was there the other night and I didn't hear a horn. I said, well, the scoreboard is missing a horn. You're 63 years well, old. Melba, make that a budget request. Uh, <laughs> there goes your balanced budget, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Center for Early Childhood Studies continues to make progress. As you, see, you can see, we have a lot of site work going on. We have the sidewalks for and some of the fence going around the, the facility. Uh, all that area that you see there will be the parking lot for about 18 spaces that will be coming there. And that will be the drive all along the front of the facility uh, for the drop off for the children. We are making headway inside as well. You'll see a glimpse of the interior in a minute. But this you can also see the backyard is taking shape. We're doing the irrigation and landscaping is coming next. And so that's just a beautiful view. That garden will be a playground area for our children that will be in the center. Um, also making progress at the Art Center and uh, a lot of site work going on. We do have two superintendents, one's working outside and the other one working inside. And this facility is well underway to be completed by the end of the year. You could hardly tell that under, beyond those doors we'll have a mechanical yard, so it's well tucked away. And that's a view from the outside of the lobby into the uh, arcade that we have there with the different arches. That is the connection to our paseo that is taking shape. And if you see it right now, it's all poured as well. And we do have some metal arches at the facility that you'll be enjoying through the outside. The progress inside continues. This is the grand staircase that takes you from the lobby to the balcony areas. And you see all of the work above uh, the ceiling that is going on. All of the duct is being um, installed and the lighting as well. So we're making, like I said, a lot of progress in that facility. But you can enjoy the view of the resaca in the lobby through that glass uh, arcade that you see right there. Um, we, this is one of the uh, teaching studios and the uh, practice halls that you see. You can barely see in the back. There will all the way be walls back there. And this will be uh, from uh, the restroom areas. <clears throat> They're all uh, getting ready for completion. Partitions should be coming in soon and finalizing that space. Now, this is a view that you'll never get to see again. This is from the scaffold and, and all the work that's going on above uh, the ceiling and the riggings and the lighting and sound equipment that's being hung in the balcony level. Now, the Science and Technology Learning Center, just starting uh, like August 9, 11th. Yes, sir. You leave that, the day the, all of the infrastructure work associated with the new sewer line replacement, all that is complete? And yes, that. sir. We were able to connect to the Jacob Brown and made the connections over to the chamber as well. Having the right slope, right? Yes, sir. Having the right slope and, right. and size. Right. <laughs> And over at the Science and Technology Learning Center, you see our Scorpion flag flying, flying proud in the cranes over there. August 11th was our first pour for the one of the slabs over there. And we've had a couple of pours since then, but also we had progress on a steel erection wow, that you'll that see in really a minute. Cool. So that this is place cool. is going up very fast. And we're just delighted to have Spa Glass on our campus and making headway. Like you see uh, progress already with the steel. And we'll have a second pour for the other part of the building going on in the next two weeks as well. And that concludes our report, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Dr. Pearson and Veronica. Just, uh, just out of curiosity, what's, I know we have that one last project left. And what's the schedule for the mm -hmm. Oliveda Library? Yes, sir. We have uh, hired the architects right before you went on break, and we're working with them. We plan to bring new schematic designs at the September meeting Great. for approval. So, and then shortly after that, guarantee maximum price. Good. Thank you.
Uh, next is the President's report, and uh, the Dr. Zavaleta has promised to make it brief. <laughs> Since we can't ever get Dr. Garcia to make it brief. No, I'm joking. We love her report. We love her report. I don't know if I can do that, but it's my pleasure to, to read the President's report. Our School of Education, what used to be our School of Education, I'll explain that in a minute, has been awarded an NSF grant. We continue our mission to provide excellent teachers to our community and the new Center for Teaching Excellence and Innovation in our College of Education has been awarded a $1.6 million Mathematics and Science Teacher Preparation Grant. The, the $1.6 million is divided up into uh, among two grants. The first is the NSF National Science Foundation has awarded us $900,000 of support uh, for the Robert Noyce Teacher uh, Scholarship Program. The other is a Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board grant for $700,000 for Mathematics, Science, and Technology Teacher Preparation Academy. Together, these two grants will provide more than 75 scholarships over a five-year period. The scholarships will provide tuitions, fees, books, laptops, travel, room and board, and stipends to undergraduate and graduate students, and our congratulations goes out to our principal investigators, Drs. Ronaldo Ramirez, Jr., Jerry Mogilski, Eli Pena, Phil Dukes, and Carmen, Carmen uh, Garcia Casares. <laughs> you, you, you notice that uh, the name of the School of Education has been changed officially to, to the college of education. This has been approved by the coordinating board and is it consistent with the, uh, the names of, of other colleges of education in the state. Uh, in addition to the name of the college, there are, we've changed the names of some of the departments. For example, our new Department of Educational Psychology and Leadership Studies includes educational psychology, special education, Counseling and Guidance, Early Childhood Education, Educational Leadership, and Doctoral special, Specializations. The Department of Language, Literacy, and Intercultural Studies, very elegant, includes bilingual education, English as a Second Language, Reading, Intercultural, and International Education, and, <coughs> and Doctoral Specializations. The Department of Teaching, Learning, and Innovation include such topics as teacher preparation, educational technology, higher education teaching, and doctoral specializations. The Department of Health and Human Performance includes kinesiology and exercise uh, science, clinical and fitness, uh, clinical fitness. Uh, I'm old enough to have seen uh, the, the na <laughs> names of colleges and schools and departments change many times. Those are appropriate for this time. I'm sure in the future they will change again. Our early college high school has been rated exemplary uh, by the Texas Education Agency uh, with its top, top uh, rating. Wow. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This, uh, it is the first high school in the district to, re to receive the state agency's top status. The school opened in August of 2008 with 99 freshmen throughout Brownsville. 99% of them passed English language arts and reading portions of the Texas Assessment of Knowledge and Skills test, while 93% passed the Texas mathematics portion. That's way, way above the state average. Our congratulation goes out to Ronnie Renfro, the principal on the UTV TSE alum. All right, winding down. UTV TSC to begin, this is the short version, the, uh, a, a, a full year of first year self-study. That means that we will embark upon, and many of the folks on our campus will assist in a study of the freshman year. The intention there is to how best improve the freshman year experience and especially freshman retention moving to, to, the, to the sophomore year. This process, this project is being led on our campus by Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, Ethel Cantu, 
and Associate Vice President for Student Affairs, Vince Solis. This year, Ruthann, we will have a homecoming week. And, and although it may not feel like fall outside yet, although the, the canicula is breaking, okay? <laughs> many folks on campus have been working on a fall tradition that will bring many back to our campuses, and we're calling that home we, Homecoming uh, Week. And it will include uh, soccer games, fine arts performances, the dedication of a new building, and uh, attending class reunions. Uh, that our, we will kick off our homecoming with the dedication of the rec center on Wednesday, October 14th. And we, they're, they're mentioning here, Eddie, that they're honoring, I don't know why they picked this, my class is not in here, 59, 69, they skipped over mine, 60, 66, or 79, 84. <laughs> so that ought, to, that ought to be a lot of fun. We can all wear our uh, October 1, 14? We can wear our letter jackets. October 14. And finally, student regent will become our new student regent, Kareem Mayer, has been appointed to a one-year term as a student regent uh, to the University of Texas System Board of Regents by Governor Perry, and will be visiting our campus on September 2nd. M Mr. Mayor is from Katy, Texas, is a fourth-year medical student at University of Texas Southwestern, Dallas, I'm not gonna go into that, and received a bachelor's degree in finance from the Red McComb School of Business at the University of Texas in Austin, where he minored in Spanish and was a member of the 2005 National Championship Longhorn football team. David? What's his name? What's his name? Kareem Mayer. He was right, right bench. He was a walk on. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> he going, was I'm a walk on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right anyway, and, and that's my story. I'm sticking to it. He didn't score any Thank touchdowns. You. It was still a quantity. That concludes my President Garcia's report. Thank you. I, I wanted to see where you made the edits, but. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it. The uh, no, you did a great job. Thank you. I'll tell the president uh, you did great in her in her absence. Uh, the uh, the next proposed meeting date is uh, Thursday, September seventeenth, uh, and then Friday, October second is the new date for our board retreat, uh, and Saturday as well. And then you can see the rest of the dates there. With that, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. Some of us we're stand adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Hail the mighty Scorpion.